Well, good morning, everybody. I hope we're doing well this morning. Um, I don't know about you, it's been an exhausting week. I know our students are probably tired this morning. Um, vocally, I'm, I'm shot, but we're here to worship this morning. Um, we're here to lift our voices and sing together. Um, this is a song we did this week uh, called This Is Our God, and so we want to teach you the chorus before we jump into it. This is our God, this is who He is, He loves us. This is our God, this is what He does, He saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim this is our God. King Jesus. That's the gospel truth. Jesus came and lived a life for us that we couldn't live. He was sinless. He was perfect, flawless. Then he took our sins to Calvary, died on a cross. But the good news is that the story didn't end there. Three days later, he would rise. So this is our God. This is who he is. He saves us. He loves us. We say. Remember those walls that we call sin and shame They were like prisons we couldn't escape But He came and He died and He rose Those walls are rubble now Remember those giants we call death and rain they were like mountains that stood in our way But He came and He died and He rose Those giants are denied This is our God, we sing This is our God, this is who He is He loves us This is our God, this is what He does He saves us And He bore the cross be the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim that this is our God, King Jesus. Remember, remember that fear that took our breath away. I remember the faith so weak that we could barely pray, but He heard every word. Every whisper and Now those altars in the wilderness They tell the story of His faithfulness Never once did He fail And He never will Oh, this is our God This is our God This is who He is He loves us our God, this is what He does, He said. And He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim that this is our God, King Jesus. This is what He did. Who pulled me out of that pit? He did, He did. Who paid for all of our sins? Nobody but Jesus Who pulled me out of that pit? He did Who paid for all of our sins? It's Him Nobody but Jesus Who rescued me from that grave? His name is Yahweh Yahweh Who gives the glory and praise? Nobody but Jesus Who rescued me from that grave? Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise? Nobody but Him. This is our God. This is who He is. He this is our God. This is what He does. Cause He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim that this is our God. King Jesus, He bore the cross, cause He bore the cross, be the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim that this is our God, King Jesus. He 
saves us And he bore the cross That heaven and earth This is our King Jesus Amen. Um, that's the gospel truth, that God came for us and that he would save us. Who pulled us out of that pit? One name, one person alone, and that is Jesus Christ. That is who we place our hope and trust in. And so how marvelous, how beyond on measure God is. When we think that we understand all there is to know about him, there's more. That's what we talked about this week. The whole theme is the fact that God is so much more He's not only enough, he's more than enough. He's more than able. And so this is our God. And so this morning, um, we have two verses of scripture that lead into our next song. Um, the first is out of Psalm. It's Psalm 33, 8. It says, let all the earth fear, reverence, respect the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. And then later on in Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 5, but God, but God being rich, abundance of, abundance in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved because he is rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us. By grace we have been saved when we call on the name of Jesus Christ. This is our God, this is what he does. He saves us. And so we now respond in worship and lifting our voices together as one bride, one body, seeing how marvelous, how wonderful is our Savior's love for us. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazareth. A sinner condemned, unclean. Sing Sing it. How marvelous, how wonderful, my soul shall ever be. How marvelous, how.
know, it's so good to know that through Christ, all the worries of this world, this life, all the bad things, they'll just, they'll fade away someday. And we have the hope in Him that one day we'll stand and we'll get to sing these praises directly to Him. So we invite you to sing this last verse here.
Well, good morning. Hey, so say welcome to Corinth this morning. If you are new with us, I want to uh, mention two things. The first one is uh, most people don't wear the same colored shirt on Sundays like we're doing, so uh, that's not like a weird thing. We've been at summer camp all week, and some of my best friends are joining us up on stage. But if you are new, my name is Caleb. I'm the student pastor here um, at Corinth, and uh, we're taking a break from our series we've been in for a long time now in the book of Romans, and we are going to recap what God did in and through our student ministry this past week at the beach. And so uh, today, if you're new, it's not like a normal service. We don't do this every single Sunday. Um, but we do want to share with you what God did this past week at the beach with us. And so um, so often, I think in our student ministry, because uh, we meet on Wednesday nights, we meet on Sunday mornings, a lot of you may not be involved in those days. You really don't get to see what's, what goes on in the life of our student ministry unless you're plugged in like on a week-by-week basis. Or maybe you're a parent, you kind of hear what's going on. Uh, or you may go to our social media channel and you see some pretty cool videos of what's going on there. So uh, maybe many of you may have no idea what a Wednesday night looks like or what a camp looks like for our students. And so we wanted to uh, share with you today of kind of what that looks like. And so in our student ministry, we have what I call the big three events. We have United Weekend, which a lot of us in the room grew up with that term called D-Now. Anybody a part of a D-Now before as a parent in the room or maybe as a student, right, that's been going on? So we do that in the spring. We have Hall County churches that come together. We meet all together. Uh, We have our own event in the fall. We go to the mountains in Dahlonega called Paul's Weekend, and that's kind of a a low-key event for us. We kind of strip it back a little bit, and so we just kind of focus on the spiritual disciplines. And then we have the granddaddy of them all, and that's summer camp. And so what I want to do uh, is kind of explain what summer camp is for our church, um, and then I'm going to let these people right here kind of share what God did through our student ministry. They're going to kind of recap each single day for you um, and kind of talk about the theme for the week, the different activities that we did. And so for our church, for Corinth, we have summer camp. It's called the Renth. And so um, if you can think of Corinth, we just call it the Renth, right? Um, it's led by our leaders. It's led by our pastors. It's led by our team. It's led by our church. And so putting on a camp like this Uh, six hours away from your church is not the easiest thing. Um, If you went with us and you're a leader, you probably know the manpower, the planning that goes on. Like this takes a year of planning and getting together and meeting with your leaders um, to put something like we do on. And so the setup for us with summer camp is we, I don't know if you've been to Panama City before, right? We go to PCB and we uh, rent out this whole facility that the travel, it's called the Travel Lodge uh, Sports and Events Complex. And so pretty much it was an old camp, but the Wyndham Hotels has come in and they have remodeled the whole campus. Um, it's right down the street from Laguna Beach Christian Retreat. Anybody go there growing up? It's been there for, I know some of you are like, yeah, that was me when I was like in middle school. I think that camp's been there for like 30 years. But this hotel that we get to have um, has been remodeled. It's a huge campus. They have a hotel on it. But um, they have a camp called Centrifuge there the whole summer, but that starts this week. And so we have the entire camp to ourselves. We have all the facilities to ourselves. We have a big worship center that our worship band comes down and literally sets up the whole stage. Um, Many of you may have seen that in the videos that we posted on Instagram this past week. Um, The dining hall is right next to us, and we kind of stay in these, like, dorms, bunkhouse, like, rooms that are right connected to a basketball court and multiple swimming pools. So kind of giving you numbers for the week. Um, For this year's summer camp, we had 62 students signed up. We uh, took 27 leaders with us, which is 89 people. Um, So you can imagine the logistics of taking almost 90 people down to the beach. We took a charter bus. We had eight cars and SUVs and three trailers that had to be pulled down for this year's summer camp. Um, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on. And just, I just want to share this with our church and just kind of see and to show you how much God is doing in our student ministry. When I started here, uh, we took our students to summer camp in 2018. We had 24 students, uh, six leaders. We took two 15-passenger vans and I drove my truck and pulled all the luggage and you can imagine over the past years we've now taken 90 people to summer camp um, which is incredible so God is doing a lot of big things in our student ministry um, and, it's, and it's great and so I'm gonna let them talk about it that kind of what our schedule looks like it is it's a lot right like you <laughs> you get to the end of the day and you're like okay I'm really ready to go to sleep you know some of them they'll stay up till three o'clock in the morning not at summer camp because we are I mean it's the sun right you're at the beach all day Um, And our our schedules are super busy. So we wake up in the morning. uh, We have three meals cater for us every single day. So we eat breakfast. Students go straight to their quiet time. Um, And then we have our time that we get to have. We call it devotion time in the morning, but really it's like a a training. 
And so this year we trained our students in the three circles. And if you know and been a part of our church for a long time, that's the tool that we use to, to share the gospel with other people. We train our entire church to do these things. And so uh, we did that in the morning time. And some people ask me, like, Caleb, when you go to summer camp, like, why are you in this kind of training time where you teach kids, like, how to share the gospel? Last year, you taught them how to write their testimony out. Like, you're at summer camp, right? Why aren't you playing more games and doing these things during this devotion time in the morning? And two of the big goals for our student ministry, the, can you guys help me out with this? The first goal, any of the two goals that we talk about all the time, one is sharing our faith. You know, anybody know the other one? I don't know how many times we talk about this. Anybody fall in love with? Say it one more time. God's word. Thank you. We know that, right? Sometimes I put them on the spot. They're like, oh, I don't really know what to say. Can I speak in church right now? But uh, so we share. We we teach these things. Um, and so you're probably like, well, why are you? So I had someone ask me this question. Why are you? You have students that come with you that have probably never given their life to Christ. They have never been saved. They probably have no experience in church itself. Why are you teaching them to share their faith? which we're going to share the story in a second of what happens when we do things like that. Like one, when they graduate, this is a huge conviction in my life because growing up, one, I didn't know how to share my faith. I didn't really fall in love with God's word until like later on in my high school, high school days. But teaching our students how to read God's word, how to fall in love with it, what to do with it, how to act on it, right, how to obey it. But then teaching them how to share their faith is one of the best things that you can do for your child, if you're a parent in the room. And so we give them these, we, I say, tools in their toolbox. And so you think about that the whole week, they have the training that they go through. Well, last year, we, we taught our students how to write their testimony, what their life was like before Christ, their encounter with Christ, and what it looks like after they've been saved and the fruit of their life, what comes out. Well, what you see is you see students that sit down, and they talk about their life before Christ, and they're writing things down, like, okay, this has happened, this has happened. And they get there with the part where you talk about your encounter with Jesus. Students realize they don't have a faith, they don't have a relationship with him because they, they can't write that out. The same thing happened last week with the three circles. They're actually going through the gospel and training themselves how to share it, and they get to the brokenness part, and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm actually stuck in brokenness, and I haven't repented and believed in the gospel. It's one of the best evangelism tools to teach people how to do those things, but they learn from it. It's like a self-awareness thing, right? That's one of the best ways to share the gospel was for them to come into uh, knowledge of those things, and so... We do those in the morning. Free time is beach time, pool time, volleyball time. Harley loves volleyball, by the way. She's going to talk about that in a second. She's the volleyball queen uh, of Corinth. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have worship sessions at night, uh, small groups at night, and then we have every single night we have different night activities. And I'm going to let them talk more about it. But what I'm going to do is kind of talk to you about the theme of the week, and then what they're going to do is they're going to break down each day. So our theme for the week was... Uh, so much more. It comes from Ephesians 3. It says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly more than all we can ask or think according to the power of work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And we, session one, we started with a problem. Here was the problem that we shared with our students. We said that our culture has an unhealthy, elevated view of ourselves. Would you agree with that? That our culture has an unhealthy, elevated view in ourselves. You've been told all your life, you're so great, you're awesome, you can do all, you, you can do all this thing. And then we've actually elevated ourselves between us and God. And then we also said, based on that, that we have an unbiblical, de-elevated view of God. So you see the difference? We in our culture have raised ourselves up to be an, un, an, an elevated, unhealthy view of ourselves. And we have actually learned and de-elevated God in his view. And it's actually unbiblical. So you see, you see why people aren't far in Christ? Because they have put themselves on the throne of their lives. And we shared this week that how many people can sit on your throne of your life? One. It's either going to be you or it's going to be Jesus. You, but both people can't sit on the throne of your life. And so as humans, we, we can become so nearsighted, and you would agree with this, because we be, we're, we're consumed by things right in front of us. That our, our life is really as big as the, the phone in our hands the screen that we have in our hands, that um, social media, whatever that looks like, that all we kind of talk about sometimes and we, and we spend time doing is whatever is in our hands at the moment or a screen that we're watching, right? So we talk about the dinner table. It's what you talk about at work. I mean, you can imagine the things that you talk about with your family and at work with your friends. It usually comes from where? A screen. And so we come so nearsighted of all these things, and, and from that, our decisions and our future decisions, they shrink down to like the most pressing moment. And so if we're not careful, all we think about, 
or all, all we do will come from social media, the news, the screen, and then our next decisions are so nearsighted because of our view of God that we become so consumed with what's right in front of us um, and we lose sight of God's plan. We do. That we become so consumed that from what is right in front of us that we lose sight of this so much more of what God's plan for us actually, actually looks like. And so the truth that we share with our students is that your life just doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be like everybody else in the world. It doesn't have to be what culture is telling you, that the eternal, unchanging, all-powerful God makes himself known to us. And then when we respond to him and meeting him in faith, then our lives are opened up to this so much more reality that God has in store for us. And so what we did for the week is we opened up God's word. We were in Ephesians the entire week which they're going to share in a second, and we revealed seven truths about them that are true simply because they have come to faith in Christ. If, they, if you have repented and believed in the gospel, if you've given your life to Christ, then we revealed to them seven truths about them that was true just simply because of what Christ has done for them. And it's opening our minds up to this so much more reality that God has for us. And what we wanted them to know is the truths about your identity in Christ are the truths about you that matter the most. I want to say that again. The truths about your identity in Jesus are the truths about you that matter the most. Your social standing, how much money that you make, parents, what job you're in, your career, not the most important thing, right? But if we're not aware of these truths and we don't embrace them and we don't allow them to shape our lives, then we can leave a, leave a, live a defeated life We can live a life in chains. We can live a life where we sit on the throne of our life, and it's the opposite of the free life that Christ died for us to have. That God's truth about us drastically and dramatically impacts how we see ourselves. And if we don't live it out, and if we don't embrace these truths, then it just becomes head knowledge. And so I don't want to steal any more of these people's thunder this morning. What we're going to do is, anybody see our videos on social media this past week? You're like, man, this is awesome. I want to be at this camp. So we're going to show you what God did through video. And then what I'm going to do, Harley's going to take the first day, and she's going to recap all day. We're going to talk back and forth. Uh, But Seth, go ahead and, and show day one video. In honor of USA Night, give me your best American Eagle screech. (laughs) Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Hey, who who do we have here right now? Wait, what do you mean by that? Uh, your name. Your name and Coley? your name and social security. Coley. Um, I don't have a social security. You, you have one for sure. Give me your best American Eagle screech. Yeah! In honor of USA Night, mm-hmm. give me your best American Eagle screech. <laughs> you love Memorial Day, right? Uh, give me your best American Eagle screech. Let me see the ball. 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 Let me see it real fast. Seriously, let me see it. Uh, excuse me, ladies. Excuse me, ladies. Excuse me. No. The both of you together, Harley and Candies, in honor of USA Night, together, give me your best American Eagle screech on three. One, two, three. <laughs> the best thing to do right now, Harley, is to show everybody in person. What the, I'm just kidding, you don't have to do that. She's like, you've embarrassed me enough all week. Don't do it right now in front of our whole church. Um, but uh, I, I want to give the floor up to these people, and we're going to talk back and forth. But um, kind of go into day one, what were the activities that we did, talk about worship session, 
uh, talk about small groups, a big part of our life this week. So I'm going to give it over to you, Harles. Um, so the first day, of course, is there. We traveled there, and when we got there, um, the first thing me and a lot of the people did was play volleyball because I'm obsessed with it, even though I'm not even that good at it. <laughs> um, She's a runner, but, by the way. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyways, I think I just love playing volleyball so much because it brings so many people together um, and, like, makes you count on each other, um, even if the ball ends up, like, a football field away somehow. <laughs> um, but it really does bring everybody together. Um, and to start out the first session, um, we had some special guests join us, some professional boogie boarders, um, professional. Chad and Thad. Um, <laughs> Say that name one more time. Chad and Thad. Chad and Thad. <laughs> Professional <We're> boogie boarders. <laughs> absolutely hilarious. Um, and a little scary sometimes. But um, it really did start off everybody just laughing and having so much fun. Um, but to get on to that more serious note, um, session one just already started that week off so good. Um, and truly impacted me in such a way because it faced a lot of things that I needed to deal with and talk about and realize in my life. Um, and like the first thing that Caleb said is how we've become so fixated on what's right in front of us that we're not thinking eternally, we're thinking tempor temporarily, and that we let that um, mess up the way God's trying to move in our lives. And if we just fully surrender to him um, and think eternally about what's going to be best for our lives, that's his plan for us. Um, and also one of the first points was how God is 100% in control. Um, which was so comforting to know because so many we have so many anxieties and stresses with school and sports and everything and just going through middle and high school um, and we let that take over our hearts so much um, but just knowing that God is a hundred percent in control of that like we don't have to worry about that he already knows what's gonna happen um, and he knows what's best to let happen and he's writing the story of our lives so just fully like surrendering that to him and not being worried about it all the time um, was just truly like freeing for us and the second thing was how God delights in us which I've never even thought about it in that way like he literally rejoices over us and sings loud songs over song over us because he loves us so much and he finds so much joy in us and it's not because he needs us because he doesn't he doesn't worship us but he wants us and I really love that because no matter like, if you think about Taylor Swift or any of these people that so many people, like, idolize or look up to, like, they're not pouring anything back into their fans. But, like, Jesus, we have done nothing for him, but he is constantly pouring back into us and wanting a relationship with him, wanting us to have a relationship with him. And I just love that so much. And the last thing was how um, God empowers us, um, again, to move in our faith and to be bold in our faith. And I really love that. And... Um, this session truly just humbled me because of the truth that we have an elevated view of ourselves and a de-elevated view of God, um, mm -hmm. how Caleb talked about. Because it started off that week of just, like, being at school for a whole year, having so much insecurity and caring so much about what other people think about you and trying to please people, when none of that is important at all. Um, and this week, in this session, truly just started that out of just like laying that pride down and letting God be the, on the throne of my life, not me and God, because that's not how it works, just him, um, which I really needed to hear and start my week off that way, um, which is really good, because then the whole rest of the week, like it's just a family of believers together, no. not in a judgmental way, but in a way where we can be honest with each other and mm -hmm. hold each other accountable um, and be truthful but also like living again freely, freely, like we've been freed by Christ because we have. Um, and then we went into the worship, which was so good. Um, and so many songs that just related right back to that. Like we started off with Prodigals, um, that talks about the sound of a child coming home, which was such a good way for us to remember that we're united by that love um, <laughs> that Jesus has for us. And just when Alan and them would step away from the mic, just even on the first day, like, you could already hear everybody singing, and it just sounded yeah. so beautiful. Um, and we talked about how that's what heaven's going to sound like. Like, all of us mm -hmm. just singing together and united in that love that he has for us. And we also sang Jaira, talking about how he is so much more, and he is more than enough. And we can be content in every circumstance because of all that he has done for us and all that he is um, to us. Um, we also sang Deliverer 
and how God's going to see us through going back to that control, how he is 100% in control, and how we can trust in him and all that he has for us. And we don't have to worry, but again, just live in the freedom that he's bought for us. That's awesome. What about the, the night activities? What was, what was night one? Night one was USA night, as you saw by that terrible eagle screech. <laughs> Some people were so good at it. I don't know. It. You don't probably think it's pretty good, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, Jack was really good and stuff like that. Like, I Jack has I the best one for that. sure. That's because he yeah. had, like, the cape going on, yeah. too, and, like, yeah. the hat. Yeah. Um, snow cones. Yes. That was night one, right? Snow cones What's your so favorite uh, snow cone flavor? Pina colada. Pina colada. What about you guys? Tiger's blood. That just shows how tough you are, right? If I eat a snow cone that is labeled tiger's blood, you know I'm a tough guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> What about you, Madeline? Grape. Simple, right? But a good one. Mav? Grape. Not tiger's blood? No. Graham, by the end of the week, Graham eating those snow cones, he's got a lot of chest hair already. After, <laughs> after not. <laughs> Is that true, Graham? No. We're, we're, we're still waiting on that one. <laughs> it'll come. It'll come. Um, that's good. <laughs> That's good. We do have our own snow cone machine, right? So we can make snow cones whenever we want to, right? You could probably just take that home with you. Uh, but I want to just emphasize, like, night one, um, there is so much just anticipation because summer camp is just amazing in general. And so coming down there, everybody's just attitudes are just great. Um, we're so, like, full of joy. We've also ridden a charter bus for six hours, so we're kind of, like, delirious at the same time. Um, but then when we come in the session, like, it's on. And uh, one of the things I want to mention from that is that we shared with our students that God's power is at work in you and through you. So he's working in you to uh, make you more like Christ, right? That's the Holy Spirit does. He counsels you, he guides you, he strengthens you, um, but he's also helping you be in conform to the image of Jesus at the same time. But he's also working through you, so he's giving us the power and the influence and the impact to impact our world for Christ. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He works in you, but then he works through you at the same time. And so um, day two, who's got day two? So we kind of we, we kind of went up top of that. We started the three circles the day on day two. Go, Seth, go ahead and show day two, and then we'll let Mav talk about it. So listen, we are here with the one and only Macy Gerard Parrish. Yes. There you go. I want you to give me your best turtle sound. Ah. Okay. <laughs> this is why I never get it. She, she goes, and that's like why this. you don't make it. Hey, and this is why. Right See you later. Asher, what, give me your best uh, turtle screech. <laughs> give me your best turtle noise. That. <laughs> I'll give that a two. Next person. Favorite order at Chili's. I've never, I don't think I've been. Okay, next person. All right, this is the one and only. Katie Wells. All right, give me your best sea turtle noise. <laughs> Scale of one to 10, that's a solid 9.6. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you for being here with us tonight. We gotta point something out. Shannon's in the back right now. <laughs> I'm really glad that this was put in the video just in front of the whole church. And the second thing is, Hillary, like we gotta get we gotta get this girl to Chili's. 
That has to be a thing. Lunch today after church, go, and I promise you you'll experience God's power in your life if you go to Chili. <laughs> That's me and Alan's favorite place. Uh, all right, so who's got day two? Mav, go ahead and set it up for us. So in day two, we had a quiet time in the morning, and we read through Zephaniah 317. And it was basically just talking about how, like, God wants us and that he's our savior and that no matter what's happening, he's always going to delight in us and he's always going to rejoice over us. And I feel like sometimes we can feel like we're alone, but he's always going to be there no matter what. And if we want to feel like closer to him, we need to spend more time with him and just grow in our faith because if we're not, then that's just going to lead us farther away. And so then we, in the devotion time, went to three circles and we were just talking about how to transition into the whole three circles and talking about how we need to say the whole gospel. Because like a lot of times we'll say, God sent his son, he came down, he lived a perfect life and he died, but then we'll forget that he rose again. And so we need to remember that he came and died and that he lived a perfect sinless life. And he was crucified and he rose three days later. And so we just need to be more open with our friends and just talk about God more. And it's scary, but we need to know that it's gonna be worth it. And if we really love him, then we will obey him. And then, in squad wars, we had the amazing race. <laughs> <laughs> had to Talk. eat a whole jar of peanut butter <laughs> and drink chocolate syrup. So terrible. tell them about that for a second. So amazing race is an obstacle course around the whole campus. So they got to do all these obstacles, right? But while they're doing it, before they finish, what was the things that you had to do? So you had to drink a whole bottle of chocolate syrup. No sugar. No sugar, yeah. <laughs> And then you had to eat a whole jar of peanut butter. So the whole team had to do that. Mm -hmm. And then someone had to cover themselves with sunscreen, sunscreen right? That's why you saw that. <laughs> That's great. But that was part of it. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Keep going. So and then, like, one of the things we did, uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah, we had to, someone had to swim, and then they had to go crawl in a sand pit. The whole team did. And then. They didn't like that part. Yeah. And they had to make a human period, pyramid. Uh, can't remember much else. After that Hershey's chocolate, you're pretty like, I lost it, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then we went to our worship time, and we sung one of these songs. It was called Make Room. And basically, it's just like, I'll make room for you. And in our lives, you know, we can like fill it up with like our work or our businesses or sports in general, but like that's never going to fulfill us. And so it was like saying, I will make room for you. And we just really need to do that. And in the bridge, it said, your way is better because like so many times we can go to our what we want to do, what we want, what we think is best, but the truth is it's never going to be enough. And that God's way is the only way that's going to give us true peace and joy through whatever's happening in our life. And then in this session, we we're talking about how the gospel is foundational and it's not basic. Like the gospel is like we always need to be telling others about it. It's not, it's not just like a one and done. It's like every day you have to pursue him and just be obedient and love others and tell them about the good news. And so... We shouldn't let like sports be the center of our lives or like our jobs because when we do that, we're getting, that's like an idol in our life and that's never gonna fulfill us. So we surely need to spend time with God and just invest what we have into him. And then another thing we talked about is like, works alone are not gonna save us because it's like, it's like this fake righteousness. It's like this monopoly money. And that we offer up, we do good, like, good things, and we think that's going to, like, make God love us more, but it's not. But saying that, like, being saved, that should make us want, a want to do good works, a want to serve God and other people. So just knowing that, like, desiring to love him, that's going to make us want to, that should make us want to just be obedient and share with others. And then the small groups, we just talked about how we could do all that and stuff, and just how much God loves us and that we need to be sharing the word. Yeah, that's great. One of the last points we made about <clears throat> that session was that I am an essential part of God's plan on this earth, right? If you're here today and uh, you're here for a reason, you're here, God has given you purpose. If you are in Christ and you have that purpose, uh, but you're essential to it. And so a lot of times what we talked about is that we have kind of given up that role in the church or we have abdicated that role to someone else that if we are in Christ and we have these spiritual gifts to build up the body of Christ and be connected and we we went pretty deep in two sessions just about that stuff. Um, but we see in Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ for good works. And we know those good works don't save us. We know we're saved through grace, uh, through faith. That's what saves us. And so, But when we are saved, then God can work through us 
through those good works, right? Those works don't save us. It's, a, it's what comes afterwards, what God has done in our life, that we choose to live for Christ. And the last thing that we kind of gave our students that night is, well, if, if God were to look at you or I was to take an evaluation of your life, and adults, this can be so true for you too, that what if, you know, what if God was taking a picture of your life and say, oh, well, God must have created them for playing videos, video games all day and night. Uh, that, that person who spends all their time on Instagram or Facebook scrolling every single night, um, they're not committed to the gathering of believers on Sunday mornings, which is biblical, which we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a second. Uh, they look like they're more committed to their sport than they're committed to their church that Jesus shed their blood for. Um, that their sport may not take them away on a Sunday, but it looks like they don't really care about that at all. They're not serving anywhere. Uh, there looks like their life is all about them. Um, it looks like they really don't have a care in the world to share their faith with anybody they come in contact with. That can be true for a lot of us in the room too, not just for them. A lot, a lot of times we look at our students like, hey, this, you know, you, this is important for you. Like you need to go to these camps, you need to go to church, you need to do these things, but then we don't really take an evaluation of our own life that a lot of these things that we list right now, you put in something in the adult world, this is true for us today too. Um, that if God was to take a picture of your life, would he say, hey, I must have created them for good works. Like, look at the difference that you're making in this life for Christ, or look at the difference you're making in this life for you, and your plan, and your desire, and my own wants, and selfishness, or are you doing that for the mission of Jesus? Um, and so we're going to kind of talk about this on day three in a second, but I want to go ahead and share, Matt, thanks for sharing. Uh, Seth, go ahead and roll day three video. Based on that video, we haven't introduced uh, Larry and Gary yet. You want to do that? Uh, sure. So Larry and Gary are our beachified, certified, magnified, magnificide life coaches. Every fied, right? Yes. <laughs> they were our life coaches for the week. <laughs> yep. So uh, our quiet time, we kind of just spent time in like Proverbs. And so it was just kind of about how our faith or our, we are like unreliable, and so we should always just lean on God with everything we have, and that He will make our path straight. And so it's just kind of like, uh, just trust on your Lord, and He will guide you through bumps and breaks in your walk with God. And so our three circles training, it was kind of just two different parts, and both of them, kind of like what Maverick said, were just making sure you preach the whole gospel and just transitioning through the conversation. So uh, it was like just we need to clearly explain that you need to change or you need to change your direction with your path of God and believe in just who God is. And so uh, it, for transitioning the conversation, uh, we, we should like to find someone who shares like a common issue, problem, or concern. And we live just in a massive world full of brokenness, and so it's not that hard to find, like, common differences. So uh, he taught us that we should just be fixers uh, and fix people from their brokenness and just train them to lean on God more. And so uh, like you saw in the video, Squad Wars was just kind of water-themed. Like, you had to dive down, grab a ring, just relay, so... You had to put on a water, uh, whatever it's called. You had to put on a extra, water. Extra, extra large sweater. Yes. 
it was yeah. watered down, so it was heavy, and then you had to swim back and forth. Uh, uh, water tower defense, which was just flip over cups with water guns, and you had some defenders. So it's basically just last man standing. Yeah. And then in free time, uh, it started to rain a little bit, but that really didn't stop us at all from having fun, playing volleyball, basketball, like the whole shebang. Like, if not, not a little rain's going to stop us. No. Not from a guy that eats tiger's blood. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so, for Wednesday's session, it was kind of just uh, Caleb talking to us about how in order for us to, like, maintain unity with Christ, we need to, like, prioritize uh, humility, gentleness, patience, and forbearance, which basically means putting up with other people. That's good. <laughs> we went into that pretty deeply, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so he also taught us that, like, with patience, we should maintain a long fuse or a short temper. That's good. Shoot. As I was saying, just maintaining long fuse, short temper, and heated or argument in situations. Yeah. And going back to like the humility and stuff, Caleb also gave us like some examples of like those in like a sentence form. And for humility, it's just like, uh, I forgot. Uh, I'm willing to listen. Patience is just, uh, I'll give you time to think through. Uh, forbearance is, even if we disagree, I'll put up with you. That's great. And. Gentleness is, I may be wrong. Yeah. I got it. Uh, going a bit deeper, uh, Caleb talked about how the church is a gift, and Jesus died for the church, and so we should just stay loyal and, like, understand our mission in the church, mm -hmm. which is basically just the church's motto, to love God, love people, make disciples. That's awesome. And, uh, in small groups, we kind of just talked about what stood out to us, and answer different questions on like what's God doing like through the message and then uh, the night activities is just what you saw glow in the dark dodgeball on the basketball court and we had Gary and Larry uh, jump in as the refs and we had some fun <laughs> do you remember what team won that night do we remember what team what green team won that night yeah 400 points green team yeah it points came, went to squad wars so that's right yeah, and so we had these squad war points, and so we, uh, each, each person was divided into a team. If you keep hearing squad, it's a green team, red team, blue team, and orange team. And so all of our games throughout the week went to their total points, and then we crowned a squad war champion at the end of the week. Is any, are any of y'all on the blue team? Champion, right there. Math beats his chest from that. So that's awesome, Graham. Thank you for sharing that. Um, anything else you want to add to this? Not really. No. Um, <laughs> you did a great job, by the way. One of the things we talked about in session three was that we need to walk in a way that is worthy of the calling that we have received in Christ if we have chosen to follow him. Um, and so I gave the example of me wanting to play in the NFL, right? And as you can imagine, you probably could say that'd be, be a pretty easy task, you know, all 160 pounds of me. Um, but we talked about, like, me walking in the worthy of the manner of the gospel. Um, I'm never going to be able to live up to that 100% because the exchange that Christ has for our life was just too great. But it doesn't mean that I don't try to pursue it. That in the pursuing of me trying to live like Christ, that is a Christ-like life. And so we gave the example of me trying to be an NFL player, right? I, I got the private chef. I'm doing these workouts every single day. And then um, I eat right. I'm training. I'm working out hard. Like I do all, everything like an NFL athlete would. And at the end of three months, I go and try to try out for the Atlanta Falcon, Falcons. Do I make it? For the Falcons, maybe, right? Yeah, yeah that's probably, that would be the closest team that I probably could, right? But obviously the answer is no, that I would not be able to do that. But at the end of those three months, if I gave everything, if I got all the people in, involved with that, would I be a better football player? The answer is Yes, right? Body would look different. I'd probably be a little bit stronger, faster, whatever that looks like. The same is true for us if we're living a life that is pursuing Christ, that it should be growth every single day. Um, we talked about patience, right, a lot. Uh, we talked about how we can't have unity inside of our church, inside of our student ministry, unless we pursue these things. And Graham, mention those things again that you talked about. You said gentleness. Uh, gentleness is I'm willing to listen. Willing to listen, right? What was patience? Patience is I'll give you time to think through. 
and then what was forbearing? Forbearing was even if we disagree, I'll still put up. Yeah, with you. that we can't um, we can't pursue unity inside the church. And usually, if you have an argument with someone, these things are absent. And so what we said is a short fuse or a short temper is a mark of spiritual immaturity. That's true. We said impatience with others is a flashing sign that says that we still have work to do. Um, And so we kind of worked through a lot of those things. And then we really hit the church hard again, right? That Jesus literally died for this gathering right here. Um, And one of the things that I mentioned to our students is that Wednesday nights are great. If you come up to this room on Wednesday nights, there's 100 people in the room. If you're in the kids' ministry downstairs, you're probably wondering why the floor is about to cave in. But we said all that is supplemental. That the gathering on Sunday mornings is what Jesus died for. He literally shed his blood for this time right now, for his people that came, comes together and worshiping. And we talked about spiritual gifts, right? What if you're not there? What if you're not there on a Sunday morning? Then what, what are you not being able to live out that someone else could get from you because you have this spiritual gift? That I'm actually going to preach a message about this in a couple weeks, that this whole church mo- growth movement, right? A lot of you have grown up in that. I call myself a VBS kid because VBS was super big when I was in, middle, like in elementary school. But this church growth movement started about 25 years ago where let's just see how many people we can get in the church. We'll do whatever we can. Like we'll throw a bunch of money in here and then we'll do these things. We'll get people saved. But there was no discipleship based on those things. And so these people now that are my age have no, nothing to do with the church. They're not following Jesus. And were they really saved right at the beginning? And we've heard this term before that we can worship God and not be at church. You ever heard that before? Everyone can. Now, is that, is that a true statement? Absolutely, right? A- absolutely. But we've taken this statement and said, okay, well, since I can worship God not at church, then I don't have to be committed to the body of believers, which is unbiblical in the first place. But, we, but that whole, I've, I've never heard that term being used, parents or adults in the room, and it not being used in a selfish way, right? That we use that term to make an excuse for myself for my own selfish wants and desires for not to show up to something that I need to. Okay? That term was actually created in this church growth movement to get people outside the walls of the church to share their faith. Because every member of the church growth movement, everybody gets in here, and they started this phrase we, to send people out to go share the gospel. And so we kind of use that phrase for ourselves, that selfish wants. And we're actually going to talk about that, how important that is, the church for the body of believers in a couple weeks. Uh, but we really hit that hard. And so, and just so you know, like we hit the sports things hard. Like we hit all that thing hard. And they know from my side, if you know me really well, I've coached high school football for the past eight years. I was a travel ball kid. Like our life revolved around sports. And so for me, I'm just kind of able to speak into that a little bit more because um, you're, if you're an elementary school parent or you're a middle school parent, a high school parent, like you're not receiving data from your kids and what their life looks like if they're not connected to the church right now. I'm the data kid. I'm the one that you can look back and say, okay, this is what happened in his life because of this and that and that, and which we're gonna, we talked about a lot. We're going to talk about it a couple weeks. I'm not going to run that. Um, but I want to go ahead and go to day four. Who's got, Madeline's got day four. So uh, you're, this is a great story, by the way. After we show this video, Let's uh, let's own into this because Madeline has an awesome story from the. I think I've learned how to be confident in spreading the gospel around my school and around the world. This week, I've learned that uh, God's wrath isn't like a mean wrath and is a faithful wrath. My takeaway from this week is we are God's number one creation. I learned to be more patient and just grow in faith. Check. Hey, this is Eli. One thing I've learned this week is about the three circles. The three circles has really helped me a lot. It's about how God's designed and everything was perfect. The start and sin leads you into brokenness. Go into false relationships, drugs, alcohol, and that thing's not good for you. So you got to learn about the gospel, and the gospel is basically Jesus came down to earth, died for our sins on the cross, and resurrected, meaning our sins are dead. So if you repent and believe in that, you can have a great life, and you'll want to just believe and have your fellowship within God.
really proud our kids know that song. <laughs> uh, before we get started, Madeline, I want to go back to that video. Uh, someone ran into a fence during that video. Mav, any bruises, anything that you need to recover from? <laughs> it just felt really nice to run into that. Um, so, long day. The last day is always like the longest. The be- yeah, last session is best session. Last day is best day. So we always say that. So I'm going to let Madeline share her story with you because uh, this, is, this is one of my favorite stories of the whole week. Um, hi, I'm Madeline. I've never been to Chili's. Uh, <laughs> <I'm> s- <laughs> that's changing this week, right? And she'll be more, eating more camp food this week. So That's right. She's going back to another camp. Um, so Thursday after breakfast, we um, started off our time with quiet time. And during our quiet time, um, we learned to surrender whatever is holding us back and putting our, that holding us back to putting our faith in God um, and that we trust in him because we don't know our plan for our life, only he does. I don't know about you, but for me, I have a plan for my life and I want it to go that way. Um, but it might not happen like that because it's God's plan for my life. It's not my plan. Um, and then we went to three circles and in our three circles training, we learned how to give a gospel response. We don't just want to give the information, we also want to give the invitation. A gospel response would be asking, where do you see yourself on this diagram? We then learned how to give an answer to a red, yellow, and green responses. The green responses is when someone doesn't want to hear what you have to say, and the goal of our reaction to a red light response is to be gracious. A future, so future gospel responses are possible. The yellow light is when someone wants to keep talking but isn't sure if they're ready to accept Jesus into their life yet. Our goal um, for uh, yellow light responses is to extend, extend the conversation. Um, the green light responses is when someone is ready to accept Jesus into their life. Um, the goal for our green light responses is to help the people take their next step, whether it's discipleship, Bible study, baptism, and a connection to church, church family. Um, for squad wars, um, we played volley, oh, do, sorry. We did a volleyball tournament, um, a dizzy relay race, and gotcha, which is a basketball game. I didn't really participate. I kind of clung to the babies. <laughs> Madeline was our like built-in babysitter for the week, and so we we're like, you know, you, you go ahead, you go do your do that. <laughs> um, and then for our free time, we went to the beach and the pool, which was really fun, especially to hang out with friends and um, grow closer in that way. Um, for our session. We learn that we have tremendous potential through Christ and that we need to own our faith because we live in a broken world and we're made to, be, we're made to be set apart from it and make disciples, never to look like the world. I have struggled looking like the world and not setting myself apart from it. I've avoided God because it's the easiest thing to do. The first two sessions, I actually never paid attention. I tried to distract myself um, by looking at the time because I wanted to go do the fun activities. Um, but on Wednesday during um, our three circle practice, my leaders um, suggested telling my testimony to um, teach the three circles. And my mind went blank, then I got frustrated because I couldn't say my testimony because I don't have much of it. When I was nine, one of my friend's mom went through the steps with me, but I never truly surrendered my life to Jesus. I got convicted for how I was living my life and that I needed to surrender it to the Lord. Callie Shoemaker um, took me into a room and went through everything with me, and I truly accepted Jesus into my life. That was probably one of my favorite stories all week. You remember us talking about the whole self-awareness thing? That Madeline, like me and Madeline talked about this a lot, and I love her. I like, this is one of my favorite stories because Madeline has grown up in the church. You have knowledge of the Bible because you're here every single week, like you serve every single week. But Madeline got to the three circles, and she literally got where, to get to the gospel, we repent and believe in it. We turn from our sin, and we trust in what Christ has done for us. This is a full surrender. It's not, I'll take salvation, thank you, Jesus, and I get to live my life however I want to. That's not salvation. That's actually unbiblical. Repentance and faith is how we get to Jesus. And so Madeline is sitting there, and we just start to see her getting pretty upset, and she starts crying. And And then Callie pulls her to the room. And Madeline, really, honestly, self-awareness moment of realizing I've never truly repented of my sins and given my life to Christ. And in that moment, Madeline gave her life to the Lord, which is one of my favorite moments the whole week. And she even said, like, yeah, first two sessions, um, 
I didn't even really focus on anything that you said. <laughs> and then, but I could, but those last two, Madeline, I'm just looking at Madeline during that time. It was like, I was listening to her small group talk about it this morning of just how much more joy. And it was like a freedom had been given, which is what that is, right? That we have, our sins have literally been taking off of us. Um, and now, and you know, we've spoken to that too, that God has a plan for Madeline's life and God's going to use you, Madeline. But I can just see like the zoned in like you were in these last two sessions because you're, you're new, right? The old life was gone and this new creation, this new heart that Christ has given you has begun. So uh, great story. Um, let's, give the, let's give these students a round of applause. That's awesome. Thank you all so much. I'm going to take a seat. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, you guys can take a seat. Thank you so much. If you guys have any questions about anything, especially... Uh, Larry, Gary, Brad, that Brad was a new one, right? We put a wig on Coley halfway through the week, um, and he was one of the professional boogie boarders. <laughs> he actually cha- it was supposed to be like a what a like a surf accent, but then Coley changed his accent to British halfway through, and then he went to Australian, and then we weren't really sure what country he was from. Um, but so kind of transitioning this moment, our, our worship band is actually going to make their way up on the stage, and we're going to worship together, and we're going to celebrate what God has done in the life of this church, in the life of our students, what the Holy Spirit is doing. It's, it's alive and it's active, but I want to invite you to this. Is, uh, this, this Sunday is our communion time, so there should be, the Jew, there should be a, a little communion item in your seat somewhere. It should be underneath. I'm going to kind of lead us in that time. Um, but here, here's what I usually do when it comes to communion. This is just me being honest with you guys. Is uh, it, we, we kind of view it like as another part of our service, like it's something that we do. But this is a worship time for us today. It's kind of a time of like self-reflection when we seek God in this moment. Uh, and we celebrate what Christ has done for us on the, tr- on, on the cross. That he has literally broken his body, his blood was shed so that you can come to new life in Christ. So whatever that looks like for you to respond today, maybe that's in gratitude where you're like, man, thank you Jesus for what you have done for me. Maybe it's some type of repentance that you need to make in this moment where you're, you're thinking through your last week, but you're asking God to, for one, forgive you, whatever that looks like, but also push you to live more for Christ in this moment. So I'm going to kind of lead us in this moment. So it says this, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, it says this, the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me Paul says this next he says in the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me We do this to remember. Remember what Christ has done for us. And so I, my prayer is that taking from communion to this moment that we would actually respond in gratitude, we would respond in worship. So I'm going to invite all of us to stand up together. I'm going to pray for us, and our worship band is going to lead us. God, we love you. We really do. recognize in this moment that you are good, that you are great, and that you are holy, and that you are set apart, that you are on the throne, and that we're not. God, we're thankful for what you have done for us on the cross. God, that you have come to this earth, lived a perfect life that we could not live, died on a cross, and rose three days later, defeating death, defeated sin, making a way for us to be pulled out of our brokenness so we can pursue your design for our life and recover from our sins. We are so thankful for that this morning. I pray as we worship, we worship with a heart of gratitude for what you have done for us. God, we love you. We praise you. Amen. Stand fast and in my heart, learn with me.
you speak a word, it will come to you. We sing great. God, you're faithful and true. Though the storm may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is faithfulness to me. Thank you, Jesus. Great. His faithfulness to me from the rising sun. I will praise your name. Yes, I will praise His faithfulness to me. And even in the way it remains true, I will follow. Solid rock for foundation. You don't fade, you don't waver. So we put our trust in you, our hope in you. If that's true for you this morning, would you sing with us? I put my faith in Jesus. Here we sing.
And Lord, this morning, as we continue our worship in our tithes and offerings, God, we pray your blessings as we return back a portion of what you've blessed us with. God, we pray that you would bless it and multiply it, God, as we invest it in your kingdom's work here at Court. Lord, we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. A uh, couple things um, just want to share with you this morning. Um, you know, one of the great things that I've had an opportunity in ministry is to be around middle school, high school, and college students because passion is contagious, and they are so excited about their walk with Christ, you can't help but be excited. It lights a fire under you, you know? And um, I just want to tell you guys how proud I am of you. Um, it's awesome to hear about what God is doing in your life and through your life. And also, for our leaders, um, it takes a lot of leaders to make this stuff happen. And the sacrifice that is made there of people taking a week of their vacation, of going and operating on very little sleep. Uh, can I get an amen from our leaders that went? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what the, the, the incredible return from that investment in the lives of our students, it's why we do this. It's why Caleb's up here. Our church, you, you, we need to see what God is doing in our middle high school students, right? That's a sign of health. It's a sign of growth. It's a sign of the Holy Spirit being at work. And we don't need to take that for granted. And I just want to say, leaders, thank you for the investment that you made. Um, and for our staff, Caleb, great job, buddy. Great job. Um, the one thing about our staff, nobody is on an island by themselves. Our, our staff all comes together. Um, uh, Alan was there the whole week leading worship. Uh, and had a team of people around him. Uh, when Kids Week comes up, he'll be helping lead worship. Caleb's going to be a part. Adam's going to be a part. We do stuff together here. There's no, well, I hope y'all's ministry does it. We don't do that. We're all about seeing kingdom success. We're all about being kingdom-minded. So when you see an event like this, it wasn't just one person going. It's our whole staff tries to be a part of this, being, making this a success. And so 
Uh, Alan, Caleb, you guys did a fantastic job putting the leadership behind this and everything, and I really appreciate that. Now, a couple other things that we've got coming up. Kids Week is coming up. Kids Week is going to be fantastic. It's called Make, Make Waves. Um, registration is open. Uh, it's June, uh, the event's June 12th through the 16th, three-year-old through fifth grade, uh, 6.30 to 8 p.m. So it's it, all the information's in your bulletin. You don't want to miss it, all right? So if you've got children, make sure that they're a part of that. Uh, in fact, our leaders, we have a Kids Week leader meeting right after church. Uh, Casey does a good job uh, equipping and prepping you. She's even done a great job getting food for you. So uh, then the next thing is our Connect course for membership. Uh, Adam does a fantastic job of talking about what it means to be a member of Corinth. Uh, we started doing this membership class because anytime you commit to something, you need to know what you're committing to. Amen? Uh, because this isn't a church where it's like, okay, you can go and just sit. We, we've got, God's got too much going on here for anybody just to be sitting, right? We're all, God's called, he's gifted everybody and called everybody here to ministry. So we help you discover what that is and help you figure out where to plug in. Um, and then the last thing, uh, Romans, we pick up next week. Uh, we're in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And I'm going to be talking about probably the most frequently asked question in 30-something years of ministry, how do I know what God's will for my life is? How do I know how to make decisions that will honor God? Next week, we're talking about that, all right? We're going to go through the process. We're going to talk about how you do that. How can I discern what God's will is for my life? Some very practical things that you'll be able to walk away with. And finally, if you are a guest with us, we thank you for being here. Uh, there is a uh, QR code on the bulletin. You can take a picture of that, take you right to where you can fill out uh, uh, some information so that we can contact you and uh, just say thank you for being here and see how we can help you. Well, God bless you. Thank you for being here today, and I hope you have a wonderful week. God bless you as you're dismissed.